Whether you're trying to improve your sex life or just have a better all around healthier relationship with your partner, building intimacy is key. So in this video, we're going to talk about 10 ways to build intimacy outside of sex that will both improve your sex life and improve your relationship in general, making it stronger, longer lasting, and healthier. If you're new to my channel, I'm Rachel Sloan. I'm a certified life coach, master NLP practitioner, and the creator of Better Beyond Divorce, a coaching program designed for men, helping them move forward after an unwanted divorce. All right, 10 ways to create intimacy, improve your sex life, improve your connection. The first one is eye contact. It's very, very simple. Make more eye contact with your partner. You can do this throughout the day. You can do it in little moments throughout the day. Or if you want to really dive in and your partner's on board with this, you can do an eye contact exercise. All that looks like is you sit down across from that person and you stare into each other's eyes without saying anything for a length of time. You set a timer. It can be three minutes, five minutes, 10. Some people do this for 30 minutes. And it can be an incredibly surprising and powerful exercise. You would be amazed at the emotions that come up when you stare into somebody else's eyes in that way for that length of time. But to build intimacy, you don't have to go that extreme and you don't even have to have your partner on board with this. You can just meet their eyes throughout the day while you're making dinner, while you're having sex, when they're leaving in the morning. Just practice making a little bit more eye contact and notice the connection strengthen between the two of you. The second way to improve intimacy in your relationship is through non-sexual physical touch. Physical touch, skin on skin especially, but even with clothing on, physical touch releases oxytocin. A hug that lasts 20 seconds or more releases oxytocin in both people. Holding hands, giving a massage, a hand on the shoulder, any kind of physical contact. Human beings are designed to release oxytocin to form a bond with the people that we're in physical contact with. It's because humans have, for most of human history, really relied on one another for survival. So the bonds that hold us together are really important, not just for us to feel good or be happy, but for most of our history for us to survive. So we are hardwired to produce hormones to produce chemicals that facilitate feelings of bonding, love, affection, and care whenever we have physical touch with another person. So find opportunities to have non-sexual physical contact with your partner and take advantage of that hardwiring in our system that causes us to feel connected, to feel love, to feel care and affection for those that we have consistent and frequent physical contact with. The third way to improve intimacy in your relationship is to keep a positive focus. It is so easy to become critical of our partners. Like you're living together, there's all of the little stressors of day-to-day -day life. It's so easy to focus on the negative things, the things that they do wrong, that annoy you, that bother you. This will kill intimacy in your relationship. You can't hide it. You might think you're hiding it. You're not hiding it. They know. What do they say? Something like 80% of human communication happens non-verbally. Our body language tells the other person what we're thinking, how we're feeling. There's so much subconscious communication happening between you and your partner. If you're focusing on the negative, they're going to feel it. They might not know what it is or why, but they're going to feel disconnected from you, or they might even feel afraid of you, angry towards you or defensive towards you without having any idea why. And it's because your body language is telling them that you're judging them, you're criticizing them, you're not liking them, and that makes you a threat. And as soon as they perceive you as a threat, they're going to go further away from you, not closer towards you. So focus on the positive things. The brain makes this a little bit hard for us. It likes to focus on the negative. Again, it comes down to survival. Seeing problems and being able to avoid them or solve them is a big part of what keeps humans alive when we don't have claws and fangs and fur and we're not very fast. Right? We need to notice problems. But it creates a natural bias in the brain to see the negative. If we want to have a more positive mindset and value the positive things in our partners, we have to be intentional about it. We can't just trust our brain to do it for us. We have to intentionally seek out and focus our thoughts on the things that we like and appreciate about the other person. If you do this consistently, it will start to affect the way you feel towards them. And that's going to communicate itself subconsciously without you doing anything at all through your body language. And they are naturally going to be drawn closer to you. So focus on the positive, 
Think positive things on purpose about your partner. Number four is to ask questions and shut up. This is also known and often written as genuinely give a shit when you're talking to your partner. This sounds so easy, but it can be hard. There's a lot of distractions in your life. You might not actually be interested in what they're talking about. You might not think it's important, but if they're talking to you about it, it's important to them. So ask them questions. Try to understand why it's important to them. Be curious about what it is they're trying to share with you or hoping that you'll understand about them by sharing this. Ask questions, shut up, and actually pay attention to the answers. Number five is to be honest. If you're having a bad day, don't tell your partner that you're fine. Be honest. You don't have to give them all of the nitty gritty painful details, but don't lie. If you're worried, let them know that you're worried. If you're afraid, let them know that you're afraid. If you're sad, let them know that you're sad. Trusting the other person to see you, to hear you, to hold space for your emotions, that is an incredibly powerful way to build intimacy. Be honest about how you're feeling. Don't lie about it. Don't try to be tough or strong. And I'm not saying you have to just open up about everything or make it a big deal. But when they say, hey, honey, how was your day? If your day was hard, say, you know what? My day was hard. And if you don't want to go into it and you don't want to talk about it, say, you know, my day was hard. I don't really want to talk about it. If there's a way they can support you, tell them what that is. But you know, it'd be really nice if we could just sit together and watch a movie. Or I could really use a hug right now. Or maybe we could just go for a walk after dinner. That would help me. Be honest about how you're feeling, whether or not you want to go into it, and be honest with them about how they can help you. Think about this. In your relationship, how often do you want to help and support your partner, but you don't know how? Wouldn't it be amazing if they would just tell you what they needed in that moment? If you can start being honest about that with them, it's going to build intimacy, it's going to create safety, and it's going to help them be more honest with you about what they need as well. Number six is to acknowledge their contributions. It's so easy to fall into the patterns of day-to-day -day life. Each person has their role in the relationship. Acknowledge what the other person is doing. Did they make dinner? Did they take care of the kids? Did they go to work all week and make the money? Whatever role the other person is playing in your life, how they're supporting the life you share together, acknowledge it. Even if it's something that they do every single day, notice it, comment on it. And that takes us right into number seven, which is to cultivate gratitude. This can be externally to your partner. You can acknowledge something that they've done and thank them for it. Or you can just cultivate gratitude inside yourself. What are you grateful for about this person that you're sharing a life with? Maybe you're grateful for the fact that they are there and choosing to share a life with you. Practicing gratitude is much like focusing on the positive things about your partner. It actually changes which neural pathways are firing in your brain which changes which chemicals, neurotransmitters, hormones, peptides of emotion are flowing through your body, which affects how you show up and express yourself in your body language. You become a safer space, a more friendly, loving space subconsciously through your unconscious body language, and they will respond to that unconsciously as well. Number eight is listen to understand, not to fix. This is hard. This is really hard. Most of us want to fix problems when we see it, especially if you have a very logical problem-solving brain. But when somebody is sharing a problem with you, most of the time, unless they directly ask you to help them find solutions, they're wanting you to understand the problem, to acknowledge the suffering they're experiencing because of it, and to be present with them in that painful emotion. That's hard for most of us because we don't like being present with painful emotion. We'd rather fix it, not just for them, but so that we don't have to feel the discomfort of being present with their pain. So listening to understand and not to fix actually requires you to do some deeper emotional work on yourself, to get comfortable with discomfort. And this is actually number nine, get comfortable with discomfort, get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable emotions, with feeling embarrassed, afraid, sad, hopeless. When those feelings come up, can you be present with them for yourself? And can you be present with them for another person? This takes practice and it takes conscious practice and physical awareness of what's happening in your body at any given time. Going back for a moment to number eight, looking to understand through listening instead of trying to fix, an important element of this is when you try to fix somebody's problem for them without them asking for it, 
the subconscious message that they're receiving is that you don't believe they're capable. You don't think they can handle it, that they need you to help them and fix it. That is a really hard thing to hear, especially from somebody that you love, that they don't see you as capable. Respect is an incredibly important part of love. It's an incredibly important part of relationships. When you try to solve someone's problem unsolicited, you're not being respectful. You're not respecting their capabilities and they feel that, they know that, they hear that and they receive that message and that creates a disconnect takes them further away from you. So if you want intimacy, you want closer connection, listen to understand them and do the hard work of getting comfortable with uncomfortable emotions so that you actually can do that. Number 10 is to learn to talk about sex. Sex is a great way to build intimacy. Talking about sex is a great way to improve your sex life and to create the kind of intimacy, connection, and safety that's going to improve your relationship as a whole. Talking about sex can look like a lot of different things. It can be being honest about what you like and don't like. There are a lot of sexual conversations that I think men and women should have so much more often about when you want to have sex, when you don't want to have sex, what comes naturally to you and what doesn't. This isn't for everyone, but very often men prefer sex in the morning and women like sex at night. There's a lot of different things in our biology, in our bodies, in our hormones that change the way we want sex, how often we want sex, how we feel about it, what it means to us. But if we can't tell our partners those things, if we never have a conversation about it, there can be a lot of miscommunications, disappointed expectations, and just generally a lot of misunderstanding that leads to greater disconnection. So be honest about it. And when you find out that there's things you have in conflict about sex, instead of giving up on it, find solutions, find ways to compromise and work together to take care of both of your needs and do so in a really loving, compassionate environment. All right, that's 10 ways to improve intimacy, improve your sex life, deepen and strengthen your relationships. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. I'll be putting out a lot more content every single week. All right. Thanks for being here and I'll see you guys in the next video.